You welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Our guest is here with us. They say that fashion is pain. But do you have to sacrifice fashion on the altar of having good health? Today we're looking at harmful fashion habits and we're joined by Dr. Nesochi Ibokwe. Okay, okay, she's a supermodel doctor and she'll be explaining to us the do's and don'ts of fashion. So sit back, relax, fasten your seatbelt. I believe some of our hearts are about to be broken. <laughs> some of us are like certain things. It's a delight to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me once more. So I am so excited. I, at first, before we go into the main conversation, you know, people mm. say that fashion is pain. Yes. Um, do you share such beliefs as well? Like, personally, I would say that mm. I will not sacrifice my comfort for fashion. I won't sacrifice my comfort on the altar of fashion. fashion I is... totally agree with you. <laughs> and I oftentimes tell patients, if there's anything that you're trying to do for fashion or beauty that is painful, you should really cut back and not really do that. Because ultimately, in the long run, it causes a whole host of problems. All right, so let's start with <laughs> some of the things that you can, can be uncomfortable. Some of them aren't always uncomfortable. So yes. such, let's start with wearing heels. Okay. I'm asking this because in the line of my work, I've yes. had to wear heels a lot. Yes. And hosting events, you're standing for hours yes. and wearing heels. But then you hear statements like, don't wear heels always, they're back, bad for your spinal cord. How true is that? So the problem is when you do these things chronically long term, the key is actually mixing things up. It's okay to wear a heel from time to time, but if you incorporate things like wedges that give you more support or flats into the mix of things, that's okay. The main issue that we talk about when we say um, heels can be harmful is that when you wear a heel, it kind of shifts the weight of the body towards the ball of the feet. So that does a lot of things to the body. So the higher the heel that you're wearing, it actually translates into increased problems with pain in the hips, pain in the back, and issues with posture moving forward. So chronically, it can cause a lot of problems. But if you're just doing it intermittently and you're mixing things up, then you should be okay. So beyond mixing things up, like wearing flats, are there ways in which we can manage the heels? Are there type of heels that we can rather stick to? I know that you know this, um, those very pointy heels aren't always as advisable yeah, to wear. Yeah, the stiletto heels, those aren't really always as advisable. As nice and glamorous and <laughs> fashionable. I feel so attacked. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? But still, I mean, the main thing is the higher the heel and the thinner it is, you're not really getting that support that you need. So some things that you can do, actually, you can incorporate um, a cushioned insole just to help you have some comfort and support. Because another thing that happens when you wear those heels a lot, it can cause um, what we call uh, foot deformities, like bunions and calluses and different things that will just cause you a lot of pain moving forward. Oh, wow. So bunions can be developed as a result of wearing the wrong heels. Of course, absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay, absolutely. so for those who are wondering what the bunions are, I think it's those swellings at the side of your big toe that exactly. make the toe a little deformed. Exactly. They're kind of the bony deformities that you see. They look like bumps, and they can be very... Painful, painful, exactly, true. especially when you're putting on more heels and you're continuing on the cycle. So the key thing also is make sure the shoe actually fits. Oh, because yeah. when, it's, <laughs> when you're stuffing your shoes, your feet into shoes that don't fit, that's when you have even more problems. Okay, let's talk about, speaking about stuffing, there's a part of our yes. body that we like, we like to stuff these days mm -hmm. in, and it will be the waist trainer. And this is yes. because of the illusion of beauty that has been thrown around on social media until you have a Coke bottle body. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's assumed that you're not beautiful enough. So everybody wants to have a thin waist and everybody's wearing a waist trainer. Yes. How safe and how healthy are these waist trainers? So again, waist trainers, the thought behind it is that it's supposed to kind of give you a better silhouette, it's supposed to decrease the look of abdominal fat, and just kind of smooth you out. So they say that you're supposed to wear it all the time to make you have that illusion and that look. But here's the thing with that. What it actually does, it can basically impact your breathing and your respiratory status, making it very difficult for you to breathe. And also another thing it can do is it could kind of compress your internal organs. If you're wearing any kind of compressive, um, compressive device or compressive clothing for that long, over a long period of time, it does harm to the organs. It can actually, sometimes if you're wearing it for too long and it's too tight, decrease the blood flow to certain organs of the body, like the kidney, liver, intestines which is not good. No one should be doing that in the name or for the sake of beauty. So it's really not advised to do that all the time because it can have problems. And also skin irritation too. Some of the materials that they use can really cause some skin irritation on the actual body. Now this thing you're saying, yes. you know, a lot of people are not going to understand and take this lightly because yes. 
80% you know, of social media posts, those who are pushing for mm -hmm. healthy living, they're telling you get your waist trainers, they're doing discounts, they're telling you to work out with your waist trainers on. How about the working out bit? Is that safe? Um, it's not the safest thing. Think about it. If you're working out, running, jogging, lifting weights, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to be kind of free and let your body naturally do what it needs to do while it's exercising. When you're compressing the body's internal organs and you're having difficulty breathing on account of having that very tight waist trainer on, that's really not going to help your workout much. If anything, it might just make you feel a little bit more distressed. So what is the way forward for people <laughs> who are trying to ha have an illu illusion of slimmer waistline? Mm -hmm. would, you, would you rather recommend they go for liposuction? Because now we're starting to see a lot mm -hmm. of people going for cosmetic surgery, which is my third angle. The people who feel that, you know, if you don't like it, fix it. Mm -hmm. We're enhancing body parts, mm -hmm. reducing fat from certain body parts. Mm -hmm. Would you say these are healthy as well? So... I believe there are healthier options in regards to uh, getting that body silhouette that you want to. I feel that many people don't give, you know, regular or normal lifestyle modifications a chance. And when I say that, I mean lifestyle modi modifications as in dieting and exercising and actually doing the right things in the right combination to get that weight loss and that silhouette that you actually want. Lots of people tend to jump the gun sometimes and just go and opt for cosmetic surgery. What you have to realize is with any cosmetic surgery, there is always a risk that is involved with it. So you really need to take heed if that's something that you would want to move forward with for yourself. Wow, this is very interesting you know, that we're having these conversations. Now, there are several other things that we'll look at, and I would like us to talk about contact lenses. This mm -hmm. is because I remember growing up, mm -hmm. I always wanted to wear contact lenses, and mm -hmm. my mom scared the living daylight out of me. Mm -hmm. So how safe or unsafe are these contact lenses? Mm -hmm. So in general, contact lenses are safe, but when they actually become unsafe is when you're not really taking the right precautions to take care of them. So some people are not cleaning them out properly, and also some people sleep with them for way too long. Some of the things that can happen when you're not cleaning out your lenses or you're sleeping with them for a long time, things can develop like bacterial infections of the eye or corneal ulcerations. You can actually start getting ulcers in the cornea of the eye. So the main thing is just the hygiene component of that. If you're not keeping your contacts well maintained and clean then you put yourself at an increased risk but if you're doing the right things and following the instructions as per your doctor you should be for the most part okay all right let's talk about weaves artificial weaves <laughs> have become a thing uh -huh. not everybody has nappy hair anymore mm -hmm. okay so how <laughs> safe or unsafe are these okay so amongst nigerians african women in general we love to try out different hairstyles nothing wrong with that but anytime you have a hairstyle like braids, weaves, wigs, anything like that, it puts one at a risk for what we call traction alopecia. What that means is that there's so much tugging and pulling on the hair that it actually causes a hair loss over time. And it actually comes in a bit of a process, okay? It's really an inflammatory process of the follicles, meaning that the hair follicles start to become really inflamed. Does that include the falling off of the edges? That that's, a lot of exactly. So when people about. say, I've, I've lost my edges, that's usually what we're talking about, the traction alopecia. Usually there's been that pulling and that tugging really around the um, front of the hairline due to some of these styles that it causes them to lose that hair. So initially, when you start seeing the process of that traction alopecia, the first thing that you, um, one usually sees is it starts out as you know, little bumps that can be a little bit painful and irritated. And then that usually progresses to a stage whereby you might see a little bit of a hair loss. And then finally, you may see complete hair loss of that area. So there are some things that um, one can do to help reverse that. But when it gets to the point when it's scarred over, what we call scarring alopecia, once the scarring alopecia has occurred, it's irreversible and you've lost that hair for good. The only way to get anything back is if you actually get a hair transplant, which most people are not gonna do. So what is recommended is if you are wearing wigs, weaves, braids, or anything of that sort, you need to give your hair a break sometimes. You need to mix it up. If you feel like there's too much tugging or pulling or tightness or one thing, if you notice that you're getting headaches, I know many times when you get your hair braided or you do a style, you can feel you know, that heaviness and that headache. If that's happening all the time, that's pretty problematic because over the course of time, 
you're going to continue to lose that hair. Such so thing that them. wigs are safer because you can just yank them off at the end of the day with your neat cornrows underneath and then put them back on in the daytime. It depends on the kind of wig, actually. But just keep in mind, just this is the golden rule of any of these um, weaves, wigs, or anything like that. If you're feeling that pull or that tug, that's not a good thing. How about okay. perms hair? We're seeing a lot of people now reversing to having nappy hair and maintaining the natural hair you know you have hashtag team natural yes but there's still some of us who have not yet recovered from the relaxers yes how dangerous are they to our hair so relaxers for the hair it gives people the straightened looks that they require but there are or that they would like not that they require but there are some risks that go along with it a lot of the chemicals can actually be damaging to the hair Okay, so using that over time can cause a lot of breakage. And there have been studies um, that have kind of associated the increased use of hair relaxers with the increased rate of fibroids in blacks. We still need more studies to um, determine if that correlation is really um, a positive accurate. correlation and accurate, but that cor um, some of those things have been shown in some research. Let's talk so. about something else that is now a trend today, makeup. Mm -hmm. Makeup is a thing. Everybody wants to explore. I mean, I wear makeup. You yes, wear makeup. Of course. And we don't know how, I don't know if we've done a lot of, we're doing a lot more intense makeup than our parents did back in the day. Absolutely. You know, so <laughs> with the whole contouring and mm -hmm. highlighting <laughs> and giving you a Kim Kardashian contoured face, yes. how safe is makeup? Okay. Again, makeup can be safe if you're taking the right precautions. Namely, you need to make sure that you're wiping your brushes down, um, you're keeping all your makeup supplies very clean and in a safe environment so that it doesn't cause any bacterial growth on any of your products, okay? But the main thing that you should do for your own skin is make sure that you don't actually wear your makeup to sleep. Anytime you do that, it really does damage to your pores and can really damage the skin. So just make, so, make sure you're washing your makeup off right after you're wearing that. Okay, yeah. um, speaking about makeup, before yes. we came on air, we are yeah. talking about lashes. Oh, yes. So yes, yes, yes. Tell us about lashes. All right. So when it comes to lashes, we always love to add on a lash to give you a more glamorous look, but that also comes with a lot of health risks as well. So one thing people don't recognize that it's really the lash glue that can cause the problem. Okay, a lot of lash glues have... Um, a material in it called formaldehyde and not everyone is aware that they may or may not have a formaldehyde allergy. So sometimes people who when they do put on the um, false eyelash with that eyelash glue they start to have an, a reaction. Okay so they can have what we call an allergic blepharitis which just means the eye becomes really red, irritated, uh, puffy, just very itchy, angry and upset just all on account of the formaldehyde in there. So you need to take a look and see some of the ingredients on the lash glue to see if that component of it is causing you any problems. And another issue that actually happens whenever you wear a false lash, it's kind of um, a vicious cycle because some people want to wear the lashes to give them that long you know, volume to the lash and make them look quote unquote fabulous. But another issue is sometimes if you're not taking the right precaution to take off the lash properly, you're actually taking off your own real lashes with the false lashes. And the same thing that can happen to the hairline, guess what? That can also happen to the eyelashes as well. And you can also have attraction, alopecia of the eyelashes as well. You can tell then, me about it. Sometimes. So it becomes a vicious cycle. The lashes are coming off, and then now you're putting on more lashes again because you want lashes that have disappeared. So you've been sometimes using you're looking at the mirror and wondering, where did my lashes <laughs> go to? But it's because of the repeated fixing the, exactly. you know, over and over again. And exactly. sometimes you're yanking it off without applying coconut oil to exactly. sort of dissolve the glue in Exactly. It. If you're not taking it off properly, then you are going to be ripping off your real lashes and damaging those follicles there as well. All right. And that's a, <laughs> this that's is a very problem. important information. Okay, we're going to break. When we come back, of course, we'll be opening the phone lines and affording you the opportunity to call and participate in today's conversation. I'm speaking with Dr. Nesochi Ubukwe Okeke, the supermodel doctor, and we're looking at <laughs> harmful fashion practices. We're looking at the health benefits or um, the health detriments of some of these things that have become quote unquote fashionable. We'll go on the break. Hello, Nigeria continues in a moment.
And if you're just joining us, this is Hello Nigeria. We've been speaking about harmful fashion practices with Dr. Nesochi Ibokwe OKK. The phone lines are open. The numbers to call are scrolling on your TV screen. We have just a few more minutes before we wrap up this conversation. What are some of the questions you've been itching to ask, you know, to find out how safe or unsafe they are? Now, before we went on the break, we've spoken mm -hmm. about several practices, fashion practices, and the benefit or the detriment of them. We've spoken about lashes, makeup, contact lens, artificial weave, mm -hmm. weave on wigs, um, permed hair. Yes. What else? Waist trainers. Yes, we did speak about yes, that. Yes, we did speak about waist yes. trainers. Let's look at piercings. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people these days find piercings really fashionable. Some people have as much as five or six or one ear lobe. Mm. How healthy are they? So again, it all comes down to hygiene again. If you're not going to somebody that is actually certified and knows what they're doing, a professional that has the experience in doing it, you put yourself at risk for infection. So the key is if you do want to have any piercing done, make sure the practitioner knows what they are doing and uses the highest hygienic standards. Do we have a problem with skinny jeans? Skinny jeans, <laughs> some people do have a problem with skinny jeans. When skinny jeans are worn and they're way too tight, and of course both men and women wear skinny jeans, so it's not just the ladies. When it's too tight, what can happen actually is that those, the jeans can actually compress some of the nerves in the thigh region, and it can make you feel like you're having numbness or tingling in that area long term. Oh, great. So I don't know, we've mm -hmm. spoken about several of them, and I'm wondering if there's any other area we haven't touched. And we've been focusing a lot on the women. Yes. So are there other harmful fashion practices by the men? Because fashion is a thing that it, fashion doesn't have a gender. <laughs> exactly. Fashion does not discriminate. So we were talking about high heels, but the um, gentlemen also wear he um, not heels, wear shoes sometimes that actually can cause problems as well. The main problem that I see um, with the men that are wearing shoes is that it's usually too tight. A lot of men don't wear the right size shoes. Women don't wear the right size shoes either, but a lot of the patients that I see that have um, foot problems that are males, a lot of the times it's, it comes down to finding the right shoe size for them. So when you wear those tight shoes all the time, a few things can happen in the form of fungal infections because that increased sweaty environment from wearing those tight shoes can increase your risk for having foot fungus, which sometimes takes a long time to clear with medication like antifungals. Another thing, they can also get the bunions, the corns, and all of those foot de deformities as well as a result of wearing those tight shoes. Okay, so are there any other areas that we've missed? But before you answer that, hold that thought. We have a call from Janet. Janet's calling from Bagada. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Oops, we lost your call, Janet. <laughs> Hopefully you'll catch us before we wrap up today's conversation. So I was wondering if there are any other areas that we failed to touch on, you know, some other tips you'd like to give people with regards to harmful fashion practices. Okay, there's one more I don't believe that we touched upon, and that's skin bleaching in Nigeria. Huge, major <laughs> Very important. Issue. So let's just touch upon this statistic. According to the World Health Organization, over 70% of women in Nigeria bleach their skin in some shape or form. That's mind boggling when you think about the population of Nigeria, that's 70%. So a lot of the issue comes with the um, dysregulation or the underregulation of some of these products. Some of them have um, inappropriate amounts of certain chemicals. Um, one for example is hydroquinone. When you have that amount in when you have high levels of that and you're chronically using it all the time on your skin, it sets you up for skin damage in the future. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who's participated in using uh, skin bleaching for a long time. What ends up happening is they have a hyperpigmentation that occurs. It actually becomes darkened as a result of using some of those products that they thought were safe to use for bleaching. All it right. actually causes... Yeah, just hesitation. hold that thought. We'll come back. Sure. That's a very important conversation. Sure. But let's take this call from Easy calling from Ikuridu. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Please turn down the volume of your TV set so that we can have a proper conversation with you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling Hello Nigeria. 
Okay, we might have to disconnect that call. Please, <laughs> if you have to call, remember to turn down the volume of your TV set so that we can hear each other properly. We are talking about bleaching, and I like that you mentioned that the World Health Organization said that 70% of Nigerian women mm -hmm. bleached in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Some way, way, shape, or form, meaning that some people go the extreme and their, their skin turns white. Some other brighten is by a tone and tell you, oh, I'm not bleaching, mm -hmm. I'm toning. Mm -hmm. Now, from, my, from where I stand, I, I used to think that the definition of toning was something that tightened your skin pores, but it seems that we've changed the definition of toning these days. Toning is now like brightening your complexion a little. So people who don't want to, there's a stigma surrounding the word bleaching. Exactly. So there's a stigma surrounding the word bleaching, but what it ultimately is when you are trying to change the pigment of your skin, that is a bleaching process. So we have to say, call it what it is. Okay. So if you want to use toning as your code word for it, it's still posing the same health risks, whether you're toning, bleaching, lightening, or whatever else you want to call it. All right, it can be dangerous. It is dangerous. Yeah. Let's talk to Tara calling from Bainway. Hello, Tara. Thank you for calling. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Please. Yeah, I want to ask a question. Go ahead. Is this Wazobia FM? I mean, Wazobia Max TV? Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, please. Uh, uh, in fact, I find the program so interesting. I'm coming from Benue State. I'm Thank you so much. Now. Thank you for yes. calling. But uh, I want to ask, in fact, I, I, I wish you talked about that of the part of relaxing of hair. I'm carrying natural hair now, but um, my hair is so coarse that I can't even comb the hair. I'm even tired. So I'm having this notion of maybe I should go back into relaxing the hair. I don't know, but from what she has explained. Okay. All right, Tara, thank you for calling. I thank think this is a concern much. that lots of women share because uh, we've got the texture of our nappy hair. It's beautiful, but it can be tough for a lot of people. Mm. So, you know, I don't know if you have nappy hair as well. What suggestions would you give? So suggestions I would give, it's always difficult when you're going um, into a transition in either direction, going natural or going back to a permed or a lax state. But the first thing I always recommend is make sure that you're hair is not dry. You need to have some moisture in the hair to transition into whatever process that you're going to go into. That's the main thing that you should do first and foremost. And I would say also there are lots of tutorials on YouTube. I have mm. friends that are, it's a lot of work, mm. but there are lots of tutorials. At the end of the day, it's worth it. You see people at night, they're applying coconut oil, shea butter, mm. and a lot of conditioning, turning their hair into bantu or twist at night. And yeah. by the time they wake up in the morning, it's really beautiful. Yeah. You know, so there are lots of Lots of um, tips on YouTube. YouTube has several tutorials for that. Yeah, you know, natural right? conditioners, moisturizers that, ca that you can use to get you towards like the... Like, I wish I could snap step. my finger and my hair would be nappy all of a sudden. <laughs> you know, it's really beautiful. It's but, um, you know, wrapping up conversation, what are your tips? What would be your final words when we speak about fashion and its health benefits or detriment? Yes. So, final words. Fashion is great because it helps you express yourself. It's a wonderful form of self-expression. But with that said... Never let any fashion trend cause you pain and ultimately harm. It's just not worth it at the end. And also my final <laughs> words would be that you are beautiful. Learn to accept yourself just the way you are. If you don't accept yourself, then nobody else will. The standard of acceptance which you place on yourself is the standard of acceptance that the world will give to you. So learn to accept yourself. Love yourself in whatever shape or form you come. These trends will come and go. Waist trainers would go. <laughs> the figure eight body will go. There was a time when mm. if you had to get married, they would feed you fat and calabar in the fattening room because mm. they just believed that you had to have a lot of weight and you know you had to have a lot of flesh. Mm. Now people are trying to make it look like, oh, you have to have a certain body type. No, mm. these are just fashion trends and they will come and go. But what remains is style and style is the way you carry yourself, all right? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having How me. How can people more. follow you? Those who have more questions I'd like to ask. If you have more questions, you can follow me on Twitter, Dr. Nesochi, D R N E S O C H I. Hope to hear from you. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.